Hi friends, today we are going to talk about a very interesting hack to uh, bring in the data from Dynamics 365 Finance and Operations into Microsoft Fabric. Uh, so as you know, like we already have one Microsoft's suggested way to export uh, data from uh, Microsoft uh, Power Apps into Fabric. But using this technique that we are going to discuss today, you can make it much more simpler as the as you can choose your own uh, table fills, you can write your own query, you can write your uh, own joins and all the uh, SQL, um, you know, uh, TSQL related stuffs, and you can bring your data accordingly and load the data to a desired destination, which however is somewhat not possible using the export to fabric functionality. So how can you do this? Here is how. Okay. So uh, let me begin with app.fabric.microsoft.com and this is the landing page of Microsoft Fabric and there are already workspaces which are available with uh, my works uh, or with my Fabric uh, instance and uh, you already know what is a workspace and just in case if you have not already seen my uh, previous video on Fabric uh, you workspaces and the Dynamics 65 connectivity, please feel free to have a look. So uh, this workspace I've already created and I'm just uh, launching this and inside the workspace, this is my lake house, which I have created and inside the lake house, these are the uh, tables, the files and, uh, and the like that are already there by default. So what I'm doing is that I have to fetch in data from an external source. So if I click on get data, I can upload files, you know, I can upload files like CSV, Excel or Parquet file uh, or I can create a new data pipeline. Uh, data pipeline is a very simple yet very powerful, um, you know, uh, connectivity by which you can connect to any any application, any source and fetch the data from the source to Fabric. So uh, data flow gen 2, which we will be covering today in our discussion. This is a uh, very powerful way of connecting any uh, source uh, to fabric and you can here just not fetch the data you can massage it you can do various kinds of joins you can do various kinds of you know uh, eliminating or selecting any any fields or you can transform the data uh, as as you wish and you can also duplicate data or you can preview the data whatever you want to uh, do to the data before loading into the actual destination so data flow gen 2 is uh, yet another powerful way of connecting your source to fabric and we can also use event stream to fetch the data here so event stream we will be covering on another session so for now i am going to use and focus data flow gen 2 which i am launching out here and you know you are giving any name any name like i'm just going to give a name like phenox uh, like this and i'm creating this uh, data flow is loaded it is allowing me to import the data from a few options which are you know mostly used most popular ones like excel uh, or sql server or txt or csv file or import from data flows microsoft data flows if I don't find my desired source from any one of this, I can simply go out to here and select on more. A lot of options that are available. Excel is there as usual. The Dataverse is there. Data flows is there. SharePoint online list is there. And you can even click on view more to see what are even more options are there. So uh, I can, uh, I, if you remember like in, data uh, pipelines we used to have the connector a data connector known as ax dynamics ax which unfortunately is not present in our data flows so in that case we can make use of O data so ultimately we are connecting to some form of O data entities from dynamics 365 to face the data correct so this is how we are going to interact with Dynamics 365 by selecting on this connector O data connector. So uh, this is where I can specify the URL. So URL is nothing but the base URL of Dynamics X. End it with a slash data. So if you don't provide this 
Unfortunately, data flow won't be able to recognize that as a O data URL endpoint. Then I can create a new connection. So the new connection is in the sense like, you know, I can specify the kind of authentication, like is it an anonymous basic or organizational account? We should go with organizational account whereby I can sign in with my admin uh, credentials into my finance and operations and continue from there. As I already have created one connection stream, I don't need to create once again. So I'm just selecting back the connection string which I have created. I can also additionally select edit connection to make any changes if necessary. I'm clicking on next to continue. So if I click on next, it will take some amount of time to bring up all the available OData entities that are present in finance and operations to get loaded into my uh, finance and uh, to my fabric, uh, you know, workspace. So this is where actually I am going to do the trick of selecting the multiple data sources and, you know, uh, setting up the queries in between them and eliminating or including data sources fields uh, wherever necessary. I can select here the necessary O data entities I need for my operations. Uh, so I'm going to start with I invent item groups, invent item groups. So if you uh, know the invent item groups, BI entities are the ones that are needed for uh, taking up the, one second, let me choose my invent item groups, BI entities. Yeah, it's there. I'm choosing this and also I am choosing released products uh, V2. So release products V2 are the, you know, uh, yes, this is also done. And lastly, I'm also going to choose uh, the on hand warehouse is on hand V2. Whereas I'm going to have the, you know, the necessary items, necessary items and their availability across the warehouse and sites. So I'm choosing this um, once again. And I'm just, uh, so I have in total three tables right now, and I can click on create to let them come on my, uh, you know, data flow uh, canvas. So I'm just clicking on create. Group BI entities, the release products V2, and I'm also having warehouse on hands V2. And there is a preview of the data that is basically part of this data sources. So, you know, I can, I can remove what, I don't need and I can only give those fields that are part of my operations. So what I will do is that I will uh, here in, in this step itself, I will right click on this and I will include a step known as remove the fields on this, uh, let's expand and you can have uh, various options available right now. So what I will do is that I will click on this plus sign. You will see a plus sign and I click on this plus sign. I will see uh, remove other columns option. So you can remove columns or, and you can remove other columns also. So if I select uh, any, uh, any particular column uh, or I can uh, remove top rows, I can keep rows, I can remove bottom rows. So many options are already there, uh, you know, which are definitely not part of the out of box feature of uh, which was there as a part of export to fabric functionality. So I can choose columns, I can keep columns and I can remove columns. So I can, uh, this pop-up will come, which can, uh, which where, whereby I can choose the necessary fields where, which I'm going to keep or I can remove. Fields like data ID, ID, item group ID and name and rest of the lot I'm not choosing and I'm just hitting OK. This will result in a change. It is saying choose columns with table dot select columns in bracket, uh, the data ID, ID, item group ID and name. These three fields have been appended and they, you, can, you can again choose columns. You can again keep on changing columns just by pressing on this settings and you can add as many as uh, fields as you like and this list will go on. For release products, I have done the same exercise. I have just chosen these, uh, you know, five fields 
and for warehouse on hand v2 i have chosen just three fills i can manage any kind of fills ingestion or any kind of data massaging i want by using uh, this kind of a strategy here we are going to select our march queries so this is where we are going to select what are the tables that we are going to link to one another say for example we can start with release products v2 and right table to march is invent item group bi entities so i am going to choose product group with the item group id so here i am saying that it should be an inner join and there are also fuzzy matching options which we are not uh, considering right at this point of time we'll just say okay and this will create you would see like this has created a map additionally what i have done is that i have also created a map with uh, release products v2 and the warehouse on hands v2 you'd see there are two march queries one of them is connected to as you can see on warehouse on hand v2 and another is with invent item group bi entities it's are uh, nothing but a where clause uh, as you do on a normal tsql publish our changes and make the data be flowed from if and o into the lake house tables of our workspace as you could see like this uh, flow is getting published and it's in the it, it's saying it got published successfully and this uh, this motion it signifies that actually it's creating or generating the records in the table so uh, let's wait till the process gets over this is done we can come back to our lake house and we can uh, click on this table since we we can just click on this refresh it's going to reload the list of the tables that are presently available let's see what has come and it's getting it it has got uh, successfully loaded so you see now, now uh, most interesting thing about this whole uh, architecture was to uh, bring up all the columns in one table so i have now uh, this name is nothing but uh, group name product group name or item group name we can rename this that's not a problem and this is the site warehouse and along with that the inventory uh, quantity has also come and the source name and the product name item number this they these fields also have come so uh, all these fields basically they have flown into one header and we can create a very uh, we can create a report power bi report very easily from this by simply switching over onto sql analytics endpoint which i have already uh, covered in one of my previous uh, posts on uh, on the same topic but just before we just before we uh, wind up for the day i'd like to show you a couple of things which you must remember uh, so let me take you back to my data flow and see in this data flow here we would be able to see like uh, inside this release products v2 we have these two uh, these two fields i mean these two uh, tables these two entities they are referred as tables so if they are referred as tables you wouldn't be able to leverage them in while doing the data flows execution so you have to convert them as an expanded watch what is that so you just click on this and it will show you the underlying fields. So I'm just selecting name out of this, and this will get converted into an expanded watch. So you see expanded inventory, uh, group BI and it's like that it's saying. So it's coming with the, um, you know, the product group name. So similarly, I am also going to, going to do the same exercise here. And eventually I'm going to unselect all the fields and select just what I need, like site, warehouse, and total available quantity. So when I say that, this is once again going to be converted into an expanded watch mode and all uh, the fields, the underlying fields that I needed for it uh, now are available and I can simply publish them and it will flow and sit in my lake houses table. I would request you all to uh, do the exercise and let me know if you are getting stuck up anywhere. You know how to reach me. I'm just a buzz away from you on the email ID and you can also reach out to me on this LinkedIn messenger and don't forget to like and subscribe if you have not already subscribed to my channel. Namaste and much love Subhashish.